In this video we'll be looking at the advanced graphing capabilities within NetXMS and how to actually configure those graphs. I actually picked three different graphs to show you what you can do within NetXMS, but of course there are many more options of what you can achieve with the NetXMS graphing engine. The first graph is a graph that correlates latency with bandwidth use on a link using a logarithmic scale, since latency is in the really low tens to maybe even hundreds of milliseconds and bandwidth is in millions of bytes per second. And we'll be looking at how to configure this in a little bit. The second graph is actually a stacked graph of memory usage on our servers, which can be useful for example when you have a hypervisor that runs multiple virtual machines and you want to see how much memory all of those virtual machines consume together while still seeing individual machine memory use. And the third graph is a standard bandwidth usage graph with download in positive numbers and upload in negatives. So let's actually look at how to create and configure this graph. So let's start with the bandwidth usage graph. So the first thing I will do is I actually have a couple of nodes here which are just Google and OpenDNS DNS resolvers and I only have the ping time on these nodes to see the actual latency and I also have some statistical availability DCIs. So I will just graph the ping time on one of these nodes and then add the rest of them. So just add the data sources for the rest of these nodes. So if I click OK now I will get the latencies of every single node here. Now we can actually add the DCIs that monitor bandwidth on the actual interface that connects my infrastructure to the internet. For me that's on the edge router. And my internet connection actually happens on Ether1. So I will just do bits in and out on that interface. And you can see immediately when I configure this graph, of course the ping times get lost because they are really small numbers while the traffic on the interfaces is in millions of bits in megabits. So when I just switch this to the logarithmic scale, I can actually now see and correlate spikes in latency with spikes in actual bandwidth usage. So if we switch this to for example last week, we can for example see that there are some spikes in latency but the bandwidth usage on the link was consistent, which means our ISP is probably having some problems on his end and it's not a problem in our infrastructure. So this is very useful to compare spikes in latency to figure out if those were or were not caused by the link being oversaturated. Next is the stacked memory usage graph on our servers here. So for that I will just start with one server. In this case it will be the NetXMS server I'm working on. And you can see I have DCIs here for actual memory usage with and without cache. So for this graph I will use the actual memory usage without cache. And I will then go to properties and simply add other servers because all of them have this same DCI which monitors the memory usage. Okay, here we go. So now I actually have all of those values in the graph here and if I just turn on the stacked option and I will also disable automatic refresh and then graph it as let's say a 12 hours graph. And then if I go into properties and actually select these data sources and select area chart for every single one of these data sources. And let's switch to, let's say, one day just to have a bit more data here. And it will actually give me a nice graph of memory usage on all of these servers. And again, this is actual memory used on the server. So if I had a hypervisor like we do here, and actually all of these machines are virtual machines, I could see how much memory I would actually need on that hypervisor to be able to run all of those virtual machines. So if I was upgrading to a newer server or I needed to move them into a cloud-based solution, I could actually see exactly how much memory I need in total for all of my servers without over committing memory, etc.
So this is the same graph that you were able to see here before. Sti this simply has more virtual machines and is actually a graph for a longer time period. So the last graph was just a bandwidth graph. So for this one, we can actually go again to our edge router and start with graphing the, the bandwidth use on there. So for me, I will just graph the incoming and outgoing traffic in bits per second on my internet uplink interface. And I will simply go into the upload. So the upload are actually the bits going out to my provider. And I will invert these values into negative. And I can also do this as area charts. And in general, I will disable translucency. And this will give me my download in positive scale and my upload in negative scale. And then again, if I do this graph for, let's say, last five days, it will actually show me spikes and everything else that happens in my actual infrastructure, on my actual internet-facing uplink. So as I mentioned, this is just a couple of examples how you can do nice graphs within NetXMS and how graphing can help you visualize a lot of the data that you are collecting with NetXMS. There are of course many more options and many more useful ways in which graphs can be configured, tuned and changed. These were just a few examples that I find particularly useful and I actually use very often. See you in the next video.